Good afternoon and welcome to Today on Bay TV. We are live in Swansea on Thursday the 25th of May 2017. I'm Henry Darby Cook and this is Liz Cairns. We've been joined by Clive Lloyd, the Deputy Leader of the Council and our Head of News, Carwin Evans, discussing an uneasy 24 hours in Swansea to say the least. It is. Yeah, it's been... I wouldn't, it's been a strange time really in Swansea from two o'clock yesterday afternoon when we sort of first heard about the quadrant and the bus station be, being evacuated and it's uh, luckily it's it sort of turned out that there wasn't anything dangerous uh, in, in the city but mm. it, it's worrying really isn't it as in we've heard about it all over the world obviously Manchester on Monday is is closer but now to hear about suspicious packages being found on our front door, sort of on our doorstep, it's really worrying, I don't know. You... Yeah, no, absolutely. Listen, it's been a difficult couple of days, hasn't it, for everyone? You know, I went to bed on Monday night, and just had a, a flash on my mobile phone about an, a potential explosion, but waking up to some horrific news on, on Tuesday. And then locally, if that's not bad enough, locally then to have these, these hoaxes and um, things going on which you know unsettle people even more and yeah. right on your doorstep is is uh is really difficult to take but you know we've got fantastic security services the council is well prepared for these sort of events and uh you know we just need to do, continue doing what we do and making sure that the, they have as little impact as possible which is exactly. what they're meant to do yeah and uh, they're wasting the police time as well valuable police time mm. at this moment in time and the fact the police have said that they won't take anything lightly and they will be prosecuted and this should not be going on. No, no. hoaxes at the moment. It's terrifying other people, it's terrifying the children, and it's re making other people relive everything over and over. I think what's sort of been, been great is, is the reaction of, of the Swan people in Swansea, the community. Mm. They've, they've, they've listened to all instructions that the police and, and the council and ev everybody have given them, and they've, they've almost carried on despite the, 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 the disruptions to their day, and, and they've let the the people who, who work in these situations and who know what they're doing to, to carry on with their work and to ensure then that that, that, that it is a sort of a safe place to, to walk around. And I think um, it's fantastic, the community, but also of um, the emergency services, the way they, they've reacted uh, yesterday in the city centre and, and this morning um, on just on, on Grove Place on the crossing outside Swansea uh, Central Police Station and the Magistrate Court. They've, they, they've Done as delayed everybody up as little as possible and 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 and, and got the job done really. Well, listen, and I, again, I'd reiterate it's really important that we continue to go about our day-to-day -day business. I know that's that's stressed in the media nationally, but locally, that's that's really really important. We shouldn't be disrupted. We shouldn't be put off because that's exactly, as I say, what people are trying to do. And you know, the fact that we were, the police were able to respond so quickly and act actually made an arrest. Um, is testament that people should be absolutely reassured in in in, uh, in the security service, as uh, Carvin has said. I've, I think we've got a, a little clip, haven't we? Should we have a little look at that, yes, and then we'll talk yeah. about that. So this was uh, this morning's activities. Yeah, and it sort of all happened uh, within a, within a matter of minutes. Really. We we got a, a message from uh, our, our floor manager here, Jeff, in, in Bay TV, and he. And we sort of reacted to it. And, and outside the office, we, this police cordon was being set up. And for, for a few minutes, we weren't sure what was happening. But then it, it, um, it came, came apparent that they'd received a, a call um, that there was a, a suspicious... Pa well, I don't know if it was a suspicious package, the word wasn't used, but something found in, 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 in the bin then. And um, luckily, the, the police have since said that it was a false alarm, but, but the call came with good intent. And I think... That it's fantastic to see that people now are keeping an eye out, are being vigilant of what they do find in bins or, what, or if packages are found, and are, and are phoning, as in, I'm sure for a, uh, it's hard to say if, if everybody would have reacted like that, but it's good to see that people are still looking out for each other, looking out for themselves, and, and making the calls to ensure that uh, the police can come in um, and, and deal with these sort of situations um, as easily and as, as sort of swiftly as possible, really. If we look back at yesterday as well, obviously more severity to yesterday's incident. Yeah. Um, I think was it around two o'clock, just as we finished the live again. Our floor yes, manager yeah. was taking a trip into town, and he'd uh, messaged us and said oh, the quadrant's been evacuated, and it's been closed. We then hear that the market had been evacuated and closed, then the bus station, and then kind of the surrounding shops on Oxford Street. 
Um, and in, the, in a strange turn of events, it wasn't until about just after three o'clock where me and uh, Jack, the sound technician, and Chris, the director, yeah. went to grab some quick lunch to come back and kind of work on things. We kind of see it all in front of us. Um, Carwin, if you, do you want to take over from here of the the events that followed? Well, yeah, and it's, it's 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 a strange one, really, isn't it? Yeah. As you say, you're just you're walking through lunch, and the next walking through town, sorry, getting some lunch, and the next thing we hear um, is you come back and tell us, oh, five police officers were, were chasing this were chasing this man down the street, asking for sort of uh, the assistance of of people to, to to stop him, and as you say, Jack, yeah, sort of intervened and and felt the urge inside him really to to, to, to tackle the, to tackle this man and help the police and I think again it just shows how strong the community is in Swansea that we're all chipping in together it would have been easily enough, easy enough for to walk away and let the police carry on but at that moment we, we all react differently and I think it, it, it's great to see that we're helping each other out and we're we're fighting mm -hmm. to, to make Swansea a safe and great place to live work and, and shop. I mean, I was standing next to Jack and it very much was fight or flight and I was told, hold my coffee, and I kind of watched him overtake five police officers and turn the corner into the M&S car park. Even then, at the time, we were walking back to eat our lunch and Jack was like, I'm sure that's just a shoplifter, I'm sure that's nothing to do with what's going on today. To then be later be told by the police that actually the man arrested, that Jack was involved with the arrest, obviously the, the, t the tackling of him, that he was the the main culprit of yesterday's events. I can feel an award coming on for Jack here. <laughs> but it, uh, on a serious note, it always amazes me how people's instincts kick in in, in adversity yeah. from the, the stories that we heard from Manchester on, mm -hmm. on Monday evening yeah. and the aftermath through to Jack and, and his response. You know, nobody knows how they're going to react yeah. in that sort of situation. No. But fortunately, you know, we have... The majority, the vast majority of people in this country are decent and they act in the right way. And there's, some, as I say, some really great examples from Manchester, but Jack is our, our local hero. <laughs> he he is, sure. isn't he? He is. Moving forward from this, I mean, we're not going to be the only city that are feeling scared at the moment. Um, and, I'm, you know, touch wood, nothing will be, you know, more will come from this. But it's, it is a tense time in the UK. Clive, how can cities all over kind of come back together and kind of, you know, I know the, we're being preached to carry on as normal, but it's hard, isn't it? It is difficult, it's not easy, but we can't let these people win. You know, the, the people that come in to cause maximum damage to our communities, to our mm -hmm. citizens, to our, our children, yeah. it's absolutely abhorrent. And they want to come in and cause maximum disruption, and it's incumbent on us to, um, to react to that and, and not let it disaffect our lives and impact on our lives. And the beauty about the UK, Wales and Swansea in particular, we're, we're a, a tolerant society, we're a tolerant city, we're a city of sanctuary, and that's an important message that we need to keep, keep putting over as well. We need to carry on, but, you know, we need to, you know, not bow to the hate that potentially could be created from, from this sort of thing. And again, that is exactly what these type of people want to create, a division, hate, uh, and, and a reaction from people in a negative way. And I'm sure the people, the vast majority of people know that's the case and they won't want to accede to that, that sort of uh, rhetoric and uh, those actions. So mm. I'm pretty confident that very soon we'll, we'll, we'll be back to some normality. And as a local authority, we'll continue to, to work with people if anyone's got any concerns, we'll, we'll allay those concerns and people can be reassured that we're, we're doing that. Well, let's talk about a, a couple of concerns. Obviously, Swansea as a city has a very busy summer ahead of it. Take that's just around the corner at the Liberty Stadium. What per, uh, precautions been upped? What? Listen, we will we'll absolutely take the advice from, from, from the, the security services, from the agencies, and, and no doubt in light of, of what's going on, you know, People would expect us to, to do all the sort of the, the risk assessments that are required. But, you know, people just need to carry on attending. You know, there may be some extra precautions, some, some extra checks, maybe a bit of time delay, but it'll all be done for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And people's security is the utmost in, in the council's minds, in the planning and the police. So we'll continue to work together and people can rest assured that those plans are in place, they will be in place, and they should carry on attending Take that, that, to take that concept as, as originally planned. Please don't be put off because, again, that's exactly what yeah. these people are trying to, uh, yeah. try, trying to put in place. Exactly. Putting their minds at ease, I think, 
the most important. Absolutely. Now, like you said, that's the way of moving forward. Yeah. Mm. I think a good thing for the city is the, is the is the reaction we've seen in the last two days of, of everybody. It's it's really put it's put the pressure on on everybody really. The emergency services, the council. I'm going to have to stop you there, Carl. Yeah. Thank you though. Thank you both yeah. for joining us. Uh, next, we're going to be looking at today's papers, and Clive is going to be staying with us, and we're going to be talking soon. about Manchester. See you soon.
Welcome back to Today on Bay TV. I'm Liz Cairns. With me is Henry Darby Cook, and Clive Lloyd, the deputy leader of the council, is still with us. Uh, we're going to carry on from what we were talking about in part one. We're actually going to show you the footage of the aftermath just after Jack's tackle uh, with the police taking over. Yeah, that's outrageous, Jack. It was. Yeah. Heavily involved in that. Yes. So we're going to go on to the Evening Post first, aren't we? Yes, we are. We briefly spoke um, in the first part about the Liberty Stadium. On June the 14th, um, take that, should yep. be playing. They've said, obviously, they're going to continue it. They have cancelled a few shows. The Liverpool one was out of respect. Yep. And then the Manchester shows due to more security and that. And mm -hmm. once everything is put into place, then obviously they will um, recontinue with them. But as regards to Swansea and Liberty Stadium, that's going to be going on ahead as normal. Swansea Council, as you've said, will be working with the police and other organisations to review the security arrangements and any other large... Yeah, no, events. absolutely. Listen, Swansea's open for business. You know, yeah. I, you know I will state that we're not going to succumb to any sort of... Uh, uh, disruption, you know, Swansea's still continuing, and I would again advise people to continue. Take that, yeah, all you, all you take that fans out there, <laughs> Swansea was still uh, going to host that. It's interesting, really. I, I noticed a number of uh, bands took different uh, stances on on this week. Yes. So I was, um, I saw it here in an interview with Jim Kerr and Simple Minds, and they had their concert on Tuesday night, I, be, I believe. So, yeah. um, whilst take that, took the decision yes. to out of respect to. So it's. Different, different bands seem to have yeah. different views on, on how to approach um, and respect. So mm. um, I don't think there's one, one right answer to this, is there? You know, it, it, it depends. But, but definitely take that in Swansea, still massively on for us. And uh, uh, I just hope everyone turns up and has that great time. And also on the Evening Post, on the same page, they um, mentioned in the Champions League final Of course, Cardiff. yeah. We've already spoken about the fact that they'd um, risen the security prior to this. Mm -hmm. And now, with the codes changing again, the security mm -hmm. is going to be re-evaluated and then the security mm -hmm. will be changed yeah. in response to um, the critical yeah. coding now. With something like this, Clive, I guess it's because it's, one, it's a world stage and probably one of the most watched sporting events of the year, but two, it's not just Cardiff, is it? It's the region. Sure. I know Swansea's hotels are full because people will be travelling from Swansea yeah. to get to the game and get to the fan zones. No, absolutely. I mean, the impact of, a, of an event like that can, can't be understated for, for the whole of South Wales, I, I guess. You know, I, I hear stories of uh, exorbitant prices being charged for hotel rooms in, in Swansea. So, no, the benefits of, uh, of this is, is enormous. And uh, I'm well done to the Football Association of Wales and the Welsh Government yeah. for making it happen in, in, in Cardiff. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. We, I'm sure we, we'll, we'll benefit of it in our restaurants, our hotels, our pubs and clubs. And... Uh, I hope people uh, that come to the final come to our beautiful coastline and see our wonderful city as well, because we've, as I've, Rob and other people have said, we've got huge amounts to offer down in Swansea. Definitely. Uh, and I was going to say, I've also heard something about um, you hoping to get the Juventus in Cumbulla, down into Cumbulla, and Venta fans. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, John Charles, um, you know, played for Juventus. Mm. Um, and, and uh, yes, yeah, so there's there's some. I'm sure there's some lifelong ardent Juventus fans oh, yeah. that we want to see where where John and a number of other footballers, um, famous footballers, uh, grew up. His his brother, obviously, uh, Cliff Jones, I believe, is from the area as well. There's a number of footballers from that era that grew up in the in the Cumbulla area. So wow. so lots for potential Juventus fans to come and see as well. That'd be awesome. Moving on, Liz. Yes. Um... There's one thing I'd like to say. In the Daily Telegraph, yeah. it's online. Steve Jones, he's been classed as the homeless hero. On the night that it happened, he helped many of the victims. Um, he made sure they were safe and mm -hmm. that. And he's been promised a life-changing opportunity by David Sullivan, which is West Ham United co-owner. We have a lovely video at the moment to show from both perspectives. Having a look. Just, I mean, a lady and a man went and bought, spent £100 on camping equipment for me the other day. So for me, it's like, 
it's not all about taking it's about you know i had the oil because there was children involved people were hurt and it's given back to the community that's helping me as well today i've been in saint Anne's square at one of the uh, at the vigil thing and a lot of people have come out shaking my hands and calling me a hero and stuff like that i'm no hero at all i'm doing something that anyone would do especially when it's children and it's it's your own people you know people are hurt and help need help I, I done what anyone else would have, well i'd like to think anyone else would have done well you're at my son saw on the internet this poor homeless fellas really helped out and pulling nails out of people's bodies and things and he said dad can we give him accommodation for six months and give him a bit of money to give him a helping hand so i've got a great thing with the homeless we do it at Every Christmas at West Ham, we take in the London homeless. We, they play football games. They come to our game over Christmas, and I give them a bit of money, help them on their way. It's not much, but you just feel it's a big problem in our society, and this poor fellow looks like he needs some help. So we're desperately trying to see, find who he is and give him six months free accommodation, a little bit of money, help him on his way. It's just a tiny little gesture, really. Uh, but um, we'd like to give a little bit back, and um, it's... The whole thing, I think it shocked the nation. And I yeah. think if everyone's well, uh, doing a little bit, you just chip away at it, you know? That's just one of the amazing stories coming from the Manchester event that make, I think, make us so proud, actually. Yeah. And it just shows, you know, the community yeah. that, you know, the UK has. Yeah, that, yeah to, definitely. I mean, we were talking about it earlier, weren't we, Clive? It just makes you feel so humble, doesn't it, listening to that, that sort of story. and. Uh, it never ceases to amaze me, as I said, who touched on earlier, out of the most tragic, yeah. terrible, heartbreaking circumstances, mm -hmm. these stories tend to come and it shows the, the, the great uh, human nature that, that people have and how in adversity people react in absolutely the right way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, well, you know, what, what you say to something like that, you know, it just, make, as I say, it just makes you feel so humble. And, yeah. uh, um, you know, I, I'm sure there's all, there's, we all wish that we could do more um, to help the people of Manchester, and uh, there's an example of somebody who's actually actually done it. So, yeah. and, and there's there's hundreds and hundreds of, of examples of yeah. that. Yeah, stories of taxi drivers obviously giving free fares yeah. to mm. Liverpool and further yeah. away. Yeah. People rushing to the blood banks to give blood. Yeah. Um, you know, so many stories, and it's a it's a it's a triumph, yeah. I think. Of Absolutely. I was hearing also the ambulance crew and parts within the um, in the hospitals and that they've given up their spare days to right, go okay. in. And wow. without paying that as mm. well, I was hearing that yesterday. Mm. It's just everywhere. It's a show and sold out. Everybody's coming together and will do anything they can to help. Yeah, and it's it's a statement, isn't it? Mm. It's, it's people making a statement that the terrorists, the hate mongers, they mm. won't win. No. Mm -hmm. And um, and you know, again, it's just so humbling uh, to, to hear stories like that. Mm. I'm mm. sure there'll be more and more over the coming Definitely. days. Definitely. Definitely. The Queen has we found out um, since the. Telegraph. She's attended the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital. I did see. Yeah, it's, um, we have a photo over there. It's, it's just you a really see. nice thing to see. I saw, Definitely. obviously, both uh, Jamie Corbyn and Theresa May were mm. very quickly up to Manchester as well yeah. to kind of spend yeah. time with families and children that are, you know, victims of this awful thing. Yeah. And obviously the Queen today, it's just, yeah. you know, another great thing to see that, you know, with Definitely. everything going on at the moment and elections coming up, yeah. that yeah. people can take time to go, actually, there's bigger things going on. I, I mean, for me, it's uh, being of a certain age. <laughs> um, until Monday night, I hadn't actually heard of Ariana Grande. Right. Um, and I part of me it. wishes I still hadn't heard of her. Uh, no disrespect to, uh, to, the, to the artist, but, you know, to target a concert, knowing that there were so many young people yeah. going to be in attendance is, is the worst. And you just feel so helpless for the parents and the families of the people that have been killed and the mm. people that are, are really, really serious, seriously injured still. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is, words were just are not enough at this moment, no. times like this, isn't it? I mean, Ariana Grande is only 23 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, you know, apologised because obviously she feels guilt mm -hmm. and she's actually come out and said she'll mm -hmm. pay for all the, all the, funerals. the victims' yeah. funerals, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a huge mm -hmm. thing to do and very respectable. Yeah. To have that on such a young shoulders, it's, it's awful. Because yeah. you don't think of the bigger picture. That's her life ruined as well. Well, it'll always be linked to yes. her career, won't it? Or for so, the wrong yeah. reasons, yeah. No, Very sad. Um, 
And to keep up to date with events locally, check Bay TV's Twitter feed. Uh, next, we're going to be inviting Sean Reese to the sofa, and we're going to be talking about a very special day. Thank you for joining us today, Clive, and hopefully Thank we'll you. see you soon on the sofa. Yeah. Thank you. See you soon.
Welcome back to today on Bay TV. I'm Henry Darby Cook. This is Liz Cairns. Clive Lloyd is still with us and Sean Reese has joined us. Sean, you've joined us today on a special day. Please tell us more about it. Yeah, so today is actually the 40th anniversary of the first Star Wars film that came out. Um, for those of us, and I include myself, that were around when that first film came out, can't really believe that 40 years have gone past. Um, but it is sparking a lot of interest, a lot of discussion, um, and there are some really fanatical people out there who, who love this um, the, the, the Star movie set and uh, you know really delighted that it's kind of still as big um, today as it was 40 years ago. Before we talk more, we've got a great clip that will get people taste buds going again for Star Wars. Right. My only conclusion can be that it was a Sith Lord. There's something about this boy. He can see things before they happen. These visions you have Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace before the dark times. You don't know the power of the dark side. I have brought peace, freedom, justice, and security to my new empire. Well, wow. so exciting. It was, to be honest with you, looking at that now. So iconic. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if you think this was 1977, so it's quite hard to imagine um, the kind of excitement in a film like that. We were in the middle of the kind of space race at that time. Yeah. Much excitement about the idea of going into space. Actually, it was probably more of a reality back then in people's minds than it is now. There was this real idea that mm. people would go into space. And that sparked off a whole range of films. But this one was the iconic film that really got everybody thinking about that and got them really engaged in it. And appeal to I don't know a whole range of people you know yeah. from uh, across families um, to men and women alike actually which made it really unusual as a film I think. Do you think that's why they've continued to grow because they do appeal to all age groups as well? Yeah there's a fundamental thing about Star Wars which is about its story it's a modern day fairy tale and it always was um, it is an epic adventure about good and evil and of course that appeals to us it appeals to our human nature um, we love the fact that the good guy will win and we do know that we know that that's going to happen, but there are some scary moments in between. It has resonance today, doesn't it? You know, and, yeah. e and even in the week that, that we're experiencing right now. And I think that's why um, films like Star Wars were so powerful. They draw on those themes, um, mm. you know, which are human themes at the end of the day. Um, and it's all about cooperation and friendship and, and love. And those, those things endure and they last out and they win in the end. And I think that's why we all love it. Are you a fan, yeah. Clive? Yeah, I am. Listen, I... It has a new meaning for me because I was re-elected on Star Wars Day, May the 4th, so uh, <laughs> it's really special. But no, listen, can't believe it's 40 years. Um, mm. Give my age away now when I was 12, when I, when I actually queued, and I was fifth in the queue for the first ever showing of wow. Star Wars wow. in the audience on the Kingsway uh, 40 years ago. So, um, yeah, and I think it did. It absolutely captured the imagination. I, I, I can remember there, was, there hadn't been anything like it, as far as I was aware, in terms of... Um, special effects um, as a kid growing up and uh, I, yeah, I remember sitting there and uh, 
been absolutely blown away or tears it away or lightsabered away yeah. as, a, yeah. as, a, yeah. as a case it's, may be. It's quite strange, I guess, with uh, Oceana, or it was the Odeon, wasn't it, being it was. pulled down. It's the one thing I guess people haven't thought that it's memories for people going to that first Star Wars film or the first Indiana Jones film. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's no question about it. The memories are really important. Yeah. And I, I think it, that's one of the reasons why this franchise, the Star Wars, why we're still talking about it today, 40 yeah. years on. You know, part of that reason is because um, it has endured over that time. And, you know, some gaps in the middle, but films have kept coming out. And so people like me, and, you know, likewise, you know, I did dress up as Princess Leia at a school disco. <laughs> um, you know, and that and again you. shows my, my <laughs> age. I really enjoyed it. Um, but, of course, I've enjoyed then going to see those films with my own children, yes. um, creating memories for them, you know, Swansea-based memories for my children here as well. And it does, it situates. So that's the thing about these kind of social occasions is that they are important to us, you know, they're, they're part of our own heritage and culture. Culture, particularly, I think, with something like Star Wars um, and the impact it's had on our, on our world. Yeah. I've seen online um, a person had bought or had been given an item of Star Wars and he bought it for a pound and in April sold it for £10,200. Now that's showing the increase of, obviously because it's the 40th year now, and to pay that amount. Yeah. I think we need to check, actually, if we've got anything yeah. in the attics. Yeah, so uh, we're wishing we'd kept our Star Wars yeah. toys now, I think. Mm. Um, you know, I, I look at branding and marketing, that's my yeah. sort of specialism. And one of the things that is so special and impactful about the Star Wars franchise is that yeah. it is a franchise. It created this sense of brand and marketing. Yeah. Um, immediately, they, they'd engage with a toy company to start making toys and selling them, and, and that, that um, licence was eventually sold. Um, but they got themselves into households. They got these toys out. They moved quickly quickly into DVDs and video games, um, people were in Star Wars costumes. Um, you know, it was the first film that really took that kind of merchandising yeah. and brought the film into our homes. I mean, of course, you didn't have to buy a lightsaber because anything could be a lightsaber. That's true. Yeah. Um, but, and, and I think that was part of its charm yeah. as well. But there's no doubt that that kind of branding and merchandising has perpetuated the myth, if you like, of Star Wars, but also can be incredibly valuable to people who've got mm. these original items yeah. in their packets, you know, Definitely. and people love them. You know, the, the People want to buy that kind of stuff. Mm. You haven't got any mm. toys lying around, Clive, no, have you? No, I have to check the attic, but listen, it, I mean, the, the beauty of this is the longevity of it, isn't it? I watched the yeah. first three when I was a child, you know, and I was saying Return of the Jedi yeah. is a particular favourite of mine. Um, but then what ended up being the, the sequels, the prequels came along, yeah. and I watched yeah. them with yeah. my children as well, so you ended up taking your children. So. The longevity mm. of it is, is with gener it's generational, isn't it? And uh, it's something you can share with, with, with yeah. you know, your children and your, mm. and your families as well. So I think that's definitely been another appeal for me. But definitely mm. years ahead of its time in terms of its special effects and mm. its marketing and branding as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And I think what's, what, what, you know, that alone may not have helped it to survive. We've seen lots of other films that, you know, afterwards have used those kind of techniques. But that kind of really focused marketing approach coupled with this really strong, fundamentally um, appealing story at the heart of Star Wars, which is beautifully presented, mm -hmm. you know, through all the special effects. And this very exciting story. It's got angst in it. It's got adrenaline rushes in it. But fundamentally, there is this kind of narrative that we love um, and, you know, that, that we know is going to um, be valuable in our society. And I think that's what appeals to us, actually. Wherever we live, we live in Swansea, we live in, you know, over in Hollywood. Um, it's the same thing that we all want to believe in at the end of the day, that kind of, you know, goodness at the heart of humankind. It's an important story. Yeah. yeah. And that relates to some of the stuff we were talking mm. about earlier, wasn't yeah. it? You know, with the good, the good in human mm. humans at the yeah. end of the yeah. day and, uh, and how they react. It all, all, all yeah. links in, doesn't it? To say it's 40 years old as well, yeah. it's aged so well. I think some stories like that quickly age and they become yes. not apparent to us yeah. anymore yeah. because we can't really understand the story but I yeah. think to say that that's 40 and it's still probably watched on a, a daily basis I know Sky at the moment have got a Star Wars channel again where they're just looping constantly yeah and I, actually that's been part of it some um, financial success actually is it's been re-released so many times that actually yeah. it has then built up as being I think it's the second uh, you know highest grossing film of all time behind Gone with the Wind if you factor in kind of fa inflation factors 
um, you know, because obviously it has actually made more money than Gone with the Wind. Um, but, but yeah, because it has this enduring quality. And I think that's partly because it was so well mm. delivered. It was very ahead of its time in terms of its modern look when it was actually filmed to begin with. But then later, mm. films have picked up on that. They've taken it further. And they've also reimagined it for a modern age. So we've got it's really strong. You know, I love it because there's really strong female characters in it. You know, they're sort of addressing, you know, how, how the modern world works. But then they're making it appeal to, you know, both men and women as well. It works really well in that sense. So quickly, this is a stupid question. You both excited for the new one? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll be going. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I know what films I'm going to be watching this bank holiday weekend. After the break, Rob Jones from UWTSD is going to be joining us on the sofa.
Welcome back to your final part of today on Bay TV. I'm Liz Cairns and this is Henry Darby Cook. And we've now been joined by Rob Jones from UWTSD to talk film festivals and exhibitions. It's a really important time for the university and students at the moment, isn't it, Rob? Do you want to tell us a little bit more why? Uh, well, we're still sort of just kind of, uh, kind of you know, basking, you say, in the success of this week. We've had our uh, festival, our graduate showcase earlier in the week um, here in Swansea, and, and it was a huge success, very well turned out. There's about 20 films shown uh, over the evening. Um, so it's been, yeah, so it's, uh, some really good uh, works come out of the students this, this year. You you, can always tell, oh, sorry, sorry, go on. I was going to say, you can always tell by the reactions of the audiences. And how did you find that? Uh, well, as I say, for me, I think one of the, the highlights was some of the comedy that was, uh, that was kind of screened uh, earlier in the week and uh, to a huge round of laughter from the audience. And that, that's a, a very telling sign. So there was a lot of, uh, lot of uh, response from the audience, which is, is highly valuable to the students um, as, you know, as aspiring filmmakers. To have, see a film on the big screen and and then have that sort of powerful sense of reaction from the audience is is is, is really valuable. What's quite interesting about that is I guess some of the the biggest budget comedies are flops, but yet a student film can get laughs, which must be great for them. Yeah, I mean it's a, again it's a great place to for them to kind of gauge their work and their their particular style of comedy uh, in terms of that the the audience reaction elicits it. So um, yes, it's very valuable. You know. Let's talk about the film and TV course. Uh, what was Swansea Met now? UWTSD. It's got a great rep reputation, hasn't it? Yeah, well, it's um, it's well established. I mean, it's been uh, in one shape or form. It's been running for about twenty years. Uh, currently, we have a sort of a, a film, a, a film and television course and combined. Looking forwards. We're ex sort of expanding those into sort of more focused areas of film, television production. And in fact, we're also uh, bringing on a set design course as well. So those courses are work quite closely together in some areas, um, and then others are quite distinct as well. So there's plenty of avenues, if you like, or options for students coming in. Um, you know, some commonality in the first year as well, which allows students to think about where they sort of best situated and the direction they want to take forward. So it's, it's flexible in that sense, with the ability to specialise as you go through the through the, the, the chosen programme. I think that's really good and important because sometimes you don't really know where you want to specialise. You know you want to be within the TV and media and yeah. that, but it's finding and learning about other things that maybe you never even thought of until you've shown them. And then to have that ability, like you said, flexibility then to move on and to specialise into that area. Well, it's, you know, it's, that's right. And you get students who come in that are either film fans and maybe have had some sort of kind of experience, uh, you know, uh, previously in education uh, in sixth form or college or school in some filmmaking. Um, so they've tried, others haven't. So we, we, you know, we're open to people coming from different backgrounds and experiences, but with a passion to film at the heart, uh, film at the heart of that. Um, and then realising where their strengths or interests lie. So that ability to move around and kind of find, find one's feet early on and take that forwards is, is, is really valuable. And also it allows us to sort of kind of nurture or foster a range of interests and, sk and skills um, where those students, uh, you know, filmmaking is a team sport and they, so they can work together and take on the respective roles that uh, re are required within any, any production. Mm. Talking about students finding their strength, we've got a great clip where a student clearly found his strength and, you know, played with it. Let's have a, a little look. Um, well, I like to try uh, ambitious, unique stories. Um, so with Four Hostiles, it's four foreign-speaking strangers dealing with uh, a dead body in their hostel room. So uh, I tried to create something uh, a little bit different for my audience and hope try and uh, use different comedic possibilities with having different speaking languages interact with each other. Uh, I need both of you to understand that I'm not the one responsible for this. Like, we'll call somebody, but not yet. Do you understand? That is the telephone. Dame, el teléfono.
found myself going from pure suspense then to just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Do you want to tell us yeah. a little bit about Daniel and his project? Sure, sure. Um, so. But for Hostiles in a, ho in a Hostel, um, it's a dark black comedy. Um, if you, from that clip there you gathered, there's a number of languages being mm. spoken. Um, it, the idea is deliberately the confusion that may entail uh, for, for m many, many, many viewers um, to create that chaos. Um, some of the things that are of interest perhaps about the film, uh, for us it's, it's a studio build, so it's all built in one of our studios here. So as you, uh, that brings in the, the production design, set yeah. design I was referring to earlier, that's com coming into the production of it. The, um, again, you know, it screened the other nights in terms of the, the audience reaction to it, it was very positive and, uh, you know, in terms of that kind of chaotic scenario that was kind of unfolding there. Uh, Dan, um, you know, he's obviously graduating this year, is, uh, is one of our fine students um, who wrote and directed that film. So for him, it's an opportunity to kind of sort of make his directing debut um, and, and, and try stuff out for himself um, in terms of finding his style and, and, and uh, in going forwards. Um, also, I, you know, perhaps another side to that, it kind of sort of suggests the sort of international flavour you know, of, of, of what we do here. Um, and just to bring in at this stage, you know, earlier in the year, for example, we, we had a, um, and run and set up by our students uh, our Swansea Film Festival, which has a very international perspective to it. So we're kind of open to that side so dimension to uh, both sides, I guess, in terms of our, our outlook on film. Um, in uh, that community across the globe and also in terms of the students that come to, to study here from various parts of the world, America, various parts of Europe and Scandinavia uh, quite recently. Uh, so it's, it's, it, I think it's healthy to see that kind of perspective. I mean, regionally, it's very, you know, what's going on in Wales is terribly important to us, but also looking beyond is, is, is a co also something that we, we, we have our sight, you know, yeah. sights on. Uh, something to be very proud of as well is obviously students Go on to great successes here. I know you've got an award by your feet. Yes, and if you want, want to I yeah, talk dig it out? It's one of uh, several we've had over the last sort of year. It's uh, an RTS award. Uh, this one's for a, for a music video. Uh, that, so it's just uh, done the rounds uh, this year. So this, we just picked up this award for a music video. So that's one area, you know, again, in terms of the, the opportunities for our students. Uh, firstly, we've got within the programme. Uh, again, it's that diversity in op of, of opportunity. So we have students making dramas, documentaries, yeah. music videos. So we, so this is one that, as I say, just recently picked up an award at the RTS this year. Do you want me to yeah. put it down for a display? So, um, <laughs> but yeah, so that, that's, I mean, it's obviously a kind of a tribute to the work uh, that, that the students are you know, kind of doing here. And, um, and again, it's a stepping stone to them kind of um, on as well beyond uh, and the, the school wars. On, with regards now to the films that they have produced, where are they thinking of taking them to as festivals or they have yeah, so, mind? Yeah, so the, the films that have just screened uh, earlier this week, they, they'll now, uh, there'll probably be some further polishing to those uh, as final refinements before they go out. But uh, for them, the, there's already a sort of kind of strategy of festival, doing the festival circuit for some of them. Um, and then some will lead to kind of future, you know, film projects off the back of that. So, um, and then again, some of them are, are calling cards for, for, for kind of stepping into the industry in terms of sh sort of showcasing what they do. Um, and in, in, in that sense, again, talking about the diversity and, you know, the, of opportunities. Uh, students go out, I, mean, I bumped in uh, to uh, one chap uh, who finished last year who came in to see the shows on Saturday and he's already, you know, he direct, he's directed, he's had his uh, two films over the last year so he's had an opportunity to take his directing skills forward and, and actually direct a couple of uh, features in, on indi local independent films. Uh, so you've got those opportunities, people go further afield, we've had people going out producing like the Grand Tour, which has been shot oh. out, you know, um, if you've seen any of that. So that's, that's you know, the mad escapade out, uh, you know, far away. Um, and, and in fact, and increasing all over the world, um, if, you, if you, you try to yeah. track down it where they, yeah. they, they've got to over the years. I'm going to have to stop you there now for amazing work. Yeah, thank you for joining us okay. today. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you to all our guests today and for all our viewers watching us, especially those who have tuned in for our Talking Pictures afternoon matinee, coming up next on B. Today it's the 1951 adventure Valley of the Eagle starring Jack Warner and we'll see you tomorrow.